Top Flow is Tarmac's self-compacting brand. A little background story to the development of self-compacting concrete. The initial development was done in the early 1990s in Japan, as there was a need for structural integrity of the buildings to be improved. This was due to Japan sitting in an earthquake zone, and what they required was greater bond strength between the steel and the concrete. By 1995, this innovation had started to spread and there was a desire within Europe and the UK for the ready mix industry to start looking to develop self-compacting concretes for its clients. This led to a collaboration between ourselves and Chryso to develop a self-compacting concrete. The basic design of self-compacting is very similar to conventional concretes. The innovation actually lies in the development of third generation super plasticizers, which allows you to enhance that workability and with the development of the design with the granular packing gives us a product that only has high not only has high fluidity but has a self-compacting nature the definition of an admixture is a chemical product added to a to a concrete mix at production stage as to achieve a specific modification to the physical properties of the concrete what this film will do will show you that in real time and how the development and granular packing enables us to produce a self-compacting material. Question. After water, what is the most widely used product in the world? Concrete. Did you know that concrete is a whole science in itself and one in which dozens of scientists are involved every day? Buildings. For a long time, our limited knowledge of concrete meant that we had to erect standard buildings with straight lines to ensure a solid structure. Our research into the chemistry of concrete has enabled us to design a more pliable and sturdy type of concrete, allowing more daringly shaped and more spectacular buildings to be built. To achieve this, we studied the very nature of concrete, analyzing it on a microscopic scale. Fresh, standard concrete meets all durability and solidity requirements, but it is often extremely hard and viscous and difficult to work with. A natural chemical phenomenon lies at the root of this problem. Cement particles in concrete are irresistibly drawn towards each other when mixed with water. To produce concrete with greater fluidity without adding water, scientists have developed their own technology on dispersant additives, commonly known as superplasticizers. A dispersant is a molecule that physically separates the cement particles. These molecules temporarily neutralize the forces of attraction between the cement particles and this gives the concrete a much more liquid consistency. By taking a closer look, we can see that superplasticizer molecules are made up of long chains and links. The superplasticizer attaches itself to the cement particles in what is known as the adsorption phase. The quality of the raw materials used to make the cement can hinder this adsorption process. The latest generation of superplasticizers takes these cement variations into account. Its more powerful linking system rapidly covers all the particles regardless of their type. After this, each element has a role to play. The chains, which are also longer, separate the particles and fluidize the mixture. This is known as steric repulsion. On reaction with water, crystals form on the cement particles, cancelling out the superplasticizer's separating effect. To keep concrete in a liquid state for over two hours, scientists can control this natural crystallization phenomenon by adjusting the molecule's geometry and response speed. The science of additives therefore opens up greater opportunities for architects who, thanks to more pliable, solid and longer-lasting concrete, 
can think up more sophisticated designs and build ever more ambitious structures which meet their increasingly imaginative design requirements. You can see from that film that self-compacting concrete is very highly fluid in its nature. It doesn't need mechanical vibration for placing or finishing. It's very quiet to place and finish and in fact very quick to install. Areas where it's predominantly used is in areas of high congested steel, uh, applications where speed of constru construction is required, where you require a high visual final aesthetic, used in endless civil engineering and infrastructure project projects and high rise construction. And we also have a range of flowing cementitious and calcium sulfate based screeds, which are designed to be uh, final floor finishes that take subsequent floor coverings. So the key elements of making that self-compacting concrete, as we described, are the granular packing, i.e. the skeletal makeup of the whole design from cement through to sand and aggregate, plasticizers and super plasticizers, which give you the, the, the ability to create the fluidity. And to support that, Tarmac have a range of technical people that are out on the road all the time, helping and assisting our clients in the use of self-compacting concrete. And we also feel that early engagement when you're looking to use top flow is key to you deriving and driving the most benefit out of the product. So what we'd like to do now is just go through some end use applications. Residential, broadly used in this sector as a structural floor or as a floor screed. This is the Hepworth Gallery in Wakefield designed by Chipperfield Architects. This is a great example of collaborative working between all parties from architect through to supply chain. The materials were trialled in 2007 to understand the relationship between the concrete, the formwork material, placing methodology and release agents as to achieve the best finish and colour uniformity possible. A subsequent cost based analysis demonstrated that the in situ solution offered significant cost savings over precast or over a precast solution. This is the Olympic swimming pool uh, and diving boards from the London Olympics. As you can see, very complex structures would have been very, very difficult to cast in conventional concrete very difficult formwork to produce and therefore replicate and get material into and very high congested steel so self-compacting or top flow proved to be the best option available to them for, that, for, for the construction of these boards as you can see uh, self-compacting concrete enables you to derive exceptionally high aesthetic finishes this is a board marked finish you can see on the right is the actual timber. The material on the left is the concrete, but you can see you replicate any knots, resin marks, high definition of the arises between the boards, and actually the grain within the board is replicated within the ready mix. High congested steel, you would see that on the left, this steel would be very difficult to get conventional concrete in vibrated to a quality to deliver the visual aesthetic that you can see on the right hand side. Also, you can see there the visual aesthetic of that soffit is exceptionally high. And again, this is using top flow self compacting concrete. This is one Blackfriars, uh, two applications within this uh, building 95 newton columns and there was a three and a half thousand low heat concrete pour into a single raft foundation both using self-compacting technology as you can see within the columns high density of steel again would have been very difficult to get conventional concrete into that steelwork or through that steelwork and finished to a level that delivers the aesthetic you can see in the center picture this is Paddington Station, again, a similar, similar application. The column cast is self-compacting, again, with very high density steel, quite an awkward shape, would have been difficult to formulate with conventional concrete, but using self-compacting, you can see that the final aesthetic achieved is quite, quite good. <clears throat> this shows top flow in its final horizontal application. Uh, this is replacing a power floated product. 
This is Durham School, in total 1500 cubic metres of self-compacting concrete was placed over multiple pores within the structure. Typically 600 square to 100 or 105 cubic metres per every five hours was placed and only requiring four men in the up to, 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 to formulate this operation. This allowed the contractor to fast track the concrete activities to ease the programme restraints and eliminate the need for vibration, power floating and therefore noise and therefore re increasing the productivity of the daily um, pouring rate as there was no subsequent process, i.e. power floating, to follow at the end of the day, which would reduce the volume that they could have poured to meet the, the times constraints that were imposed on the site by the local authority. What this film now shows will hopefully demonstrate the speed, ease of construction, quickness, reduction in labour needed to place a self-compacting concrete. And hopefully we'll start to show the environmental benefits that the product as a whole delivers. I think you'll agree that uh, demonstrates quite clearly the actual benefits, environmental benefits in using a self-compacting material. You can see reduced placing and finishing times quite dramatically, uh, which indicate or impacts on reduction in the construction programme. Elimination of white vibration white finger, as you can see from that film, there is no need for manual vibration of any need of any type to finish the material. Noise pollution, you're not using heavy machinery, power floats, machines, vibrating pokers to, to finish the material. And as you can quite clearly see, there was two to three guys laying quite a, a, an extensive slab uh, and a very quick time. So again, the labour costs, are set, the labour savings associated with, with using the material. And also, as we spoke about earlier, enhancing that building structural integrity because of the key bond between the concrete and the steel.